Hello, Al Bigley here again with another little art lesson. This time we're going to draw, oh, I don't know. Who can we draw? I... Hey, how about this guy? Spider-Man was created in 1962 for Marvel Comics by writer Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko. In addition to a very successful comic book run, he's been the star of many animated cartoon series, live action series, movies, even a Broadway play. The character is now one of the most recognized fictional characters in the world. Let's draw Spider-Man. And like most of the art lessons, we're going to start by using our basic shapes. And we're going to end up with something like this. And then eventually, a finished drawing of the wall crawler himself. So grab your pen, actually pencil, and some blank paper and follow along and we will draw Spider-Man. So what this lesson is really going to be about, we're going to cover proportions of a normal figure. Spider-Man lends himself to that because yes, he's a bit on the muscular side as a superhero, but he's pretty much a normal figure. He's not the Hulk. He's not uh, Captain America. He's a pretty average looking character. And because his costume doesn't have a lot of doodads, no capes are covering things up, no belts, no things like that, no elements like that, he will serve this lesson well. So, as always, let's start with, this is just gonna be a standing pose. Let's start with our usual egg shape for the head. With the pointier portion of the egg pointing down, that'll be the chin. Basic shapes, right? pretty high up our page. You want to leave room for the body, of course. Okay, now let's map in the torso. This is just a standing figure. What is this shape we're going to use? What is this shape? It's going to be, of course, a kind of a wedge shape, but basically a triangle with the slimmer portion below. That egg-shaped head is going to overlap a bit. giving us a little sense of depth. Let's go ahead and put in another wedge shape. This can kind of be the pelvis, the trunks. And that's just kind of a slightly modified triangle, really, if you think about it. Let's use our cylinder shapes again or bowling pin shapes if you want, right underneath. Underneath those trunk, the trunk shapes, the shapes we have for the trunks, the pelvis, like tapered cylinders. And the reason I stopped here is that represents about the right length of the thighs compared to the rest of the body. And we're gonna show you, we're gonna cover how we get those measurements in just a bit. Let's go and make more tapered bowling pin shapes. Slim at the bottom. Just like that. Same on the other side. We're going to start where we left off. That's going to roughly be where the knees are and make these tapered little cylinder shapes. And of course, you can start to see the figure coming in like that. Let's put a foot in. Let's use a wedge. And really another modified triangle or a rectangle if you want, that's been kind of contorted for our purposes. Same here, but it's going to kind of, 
come down like that. And as you guess, that's going to be a foot. The toes are pointed somewhat toward us. Like that. Let's put in the upper arm. Again, let's just use, let's use a tapered kind of bowling pin shape. Same over here. It gets thinner and tapered as we meet this elbow area right here. And don't worry about drawing through things like this. You can always erase your pencil lines, things you don't want later. Again, another tapered bowling pin here. These are the forearms, the portion of the arm below the elbow and above the hand and wrist. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Let's come in here with a uh, another little wedge shape. We're going to have his closed fist over here. Kind of drawing this like Spider-Man's 260s comic artists. Steve Ditko, his co-creator, along with Stan Lee. And the other artist being John Romita Sr. All right. So we got our basic shapes in. They don't have to be just right. Let's take a close-up look on what we have so far. So here we go. Got that nice egg shape for the head. Triangles and cylinders. Tubes for the arms and legs. There's kind of wedge shapes for the... Uh, Feet modified triangles. Don't worry about details. Just let's get a basic design down for our drawing that we can build from. Let's talk about how I seem to know the right lengths and widths for all of these limbs. Well, Spider-Man is a superhero, of course, so he's a little bit more muscular, but he's got the basic proportions of an average person. And what we do is, for example, and remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Everybody's different. Once I've got his head shape in, I can actually take, in this case, my marker, in your case, a pencil, and measure. That, that head is about the length right here of this black cap. Once I've got that, I can measure down. That's two heads, three heads, four heads, five, six I've got them here a little over six heads tall. The average person is about six to seven heads tall. You know, we've often seen artists depicted in movies and in cartoons are always like, you know, measuring their, their subject, whether it's a figure or whatever, and they're holding up a thumb sometimes. And what they're doing is measuring the subject, coming back to their paper and going, okay, her head is about... The, the length of the tip of my thumb, let me measure that on my paper so the proportions line up. So we do go by some basic proportions. Most people standing are about six or seven heads tall. You know, about three heads down to the belt line, three and a half to the crotch, you know. And once you have that in, you can kind of get the right height. You can do that, that little system where you measure where the middle falls. You know, most thighs are about a head and a half tall. Same with the shins. But again, you don't have to measure and look at this like geometry. I once had an art teacher tell me if it looks right, it is right. Now she was speaking more about perspective, but it goes for this too. And at this stage too, you can look at it like we talked about before and see any flaws and go, well, I just spent a little bit, a little bit of time getting it down. I can erase it. No big deal. There's still time to revise it before moving on. Now that we've got this and we're happy with it, let's proceed to adding some anatomy, getting it firmed up a bit, getting it closer to being a picture of Spider-Man. Okay, here we go. We've got our basic shapes drawing. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is just 
taking that drawing, firming it up, giving it some anatomy. Now with Spider-Man we know we can keep that egg-shaped head because the mask prevents us from seeing his features. So we don't have to worry about placing the ears or the hair or things like that. So let's just keep that egg shape. Now you'll be doing this with your existing drawing and just kind of working it up. Just for the sake of clarity, I put a new sheet over this. But you can work however you'd like. All right. Let's keep these lines. Let's go ahead and put in a center line and just divide that torso just like that. Let's divide it. I'm going to come in, put in some pec muscles. These are the chest muscles. And there's about a head length. And if we measure the head again, this is like a head length to the chin to the bottom of the, uh, the chest muscles. Let's taper things here. Let's give some definition to the lat muscles. The lats are these big muscles on the side. They kind of flare out a bit. That's actually what's being worked when you do a pull-up. Are those big side muscles. Let's leave these lines in place here. Put in a little bit of a line for a neck. Attaching to the side of the head there. Okay, let's give them some shoulders. Let's round off the top of this, this cylinder. And let's round this side over here for the bicep muscle. Just kind of round off that tapered cylinder that represented the top of his arm. Let's do the same over here, round that shoulder off. Not too big, not too small. Curve this a bit for the bicep. I like to put lines here to represent the collarbone, the clavicle. Just like that. Working over our basic shapes. Not much new needs to be done to the forearm. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit more, taper it a bit more. Thin up the arm at the wrist where everybody's arms kind of do get thinner. Round it toward the top where it meets the elbow. Like that, it's starting to look like a superhero, huh? Let's add a line here to represent where he's going to have his thumb kind of sticking out. It's like we're seeing the fist resting from the side a bit. But we're going to keep that wedge shape that we originally put down in our rough drawing. But I think you can see it taking shape but what I gotta do is add that line to represent his thumb. He's got it kind of like this, yeah. That's what you're gonna see. You're not gonna see the whole thumb, just that knuckle where the tip of the thumb bends in. That's what that represents. Over here though, we're gonna see more of the back of the hand. And we're gonna use yet another kind of square shape. And maybe a little extension here to show those bent fingers. And maybe a little point here to show the thumb. Again, it's a resting hand. Boy, this is gonna to be tough to show you. It's kinda of like this. You're seeing more of the back of the hand and a bit of the thumb and a bit of the fingers. But just keep it simple with squares, triangles, and wedge shapes. Not much to do here at the pelvis. Just going to bring those lines down. Maybe indicate where the end of the crotch is just to give us a place to reference. Spider-Man doesn't really wear trunks, but I like putting those lines in just to Again, it gives you a reference for putting in the thighs and, of course, the rest of the legs. It represents the end of the torso and the start of the legs. Let's keep those wedge shapes. 
nice curve. I might thicken, again, like we did with the arms, thicken the upper part of the thigh to represent some musculature. Just like that. Again, a little thicker up top, tapering it, squeezing it as it comes down to the knee. And it looks nice and solid because we're still working over our solid proportions that we measured when we started using the head length. All right. Let's come down a bit and do the same thing. A little thicker at top for the lower leg. The ankles are going to be a little thinner. I'm going to add a little bit more muscle on top, just like we did for the thighs and the arms, the upper arms, and the forearms. Kind of exaggerating his calf muscles. A little bit of muscle exaggeration. Same here. Squeeze that bowling pin down there near the near the uh, ankles. Sounds like I'm giving exercise instructions. Squeeze, breathe. Muscles, muscles, muscles. Looking pretty good. For this foot, let's just keep that wedge shape. Let's just keep that wedge shape. I may curve it out a bit here to look more like a foot. And we're going to get a close-up of all of this in just a minute. And if it's not exact, don't worry about it. People ask me, how do you know where these things go? How do you know these shapes and muscles? But that comes from years of study and practice, even taking figure drawing and study in art school. One great thing about comics is it's all about bodies and proportions, usually on muscular people, which really exaggerates uh, the muscularity and that causes you to know these muscles and what they do and where they appear and how they appear. On this side, I'm going to give a little indication of the ankle, but just come down and keep that wedge shape, basically. Toes are coming toward us. He's just standing flat-footed, like that. This could be the Silver Surfer right now, but it's good that Spider-Man, basically, you know, is just a figure with, you know, with a skin-tight bodysuit, nothing really makes him stand out like the other characters as far as his anatomy being covered up or hidden. All right, you may have noticed I let the knees out. Let's just put these little points to represent the knees, little wedge shapes again. Just as long as we indicate it. Remember, cartooning is, it's all about you getting the idea across. You're trying to put across the suggestion of muscles, the suggestion of movement, the suggestion of drapery, whatever you're drawing. That's what it's all about. Now, I mentioned how Spider-Man can sometimes appear as just a figure. Again, no capes, no helmets, no uh, boots that have little things that stick off the sides. But I think this is the reason why his creators in the 60s gave him, and you see this sometimes, and now they call them web wings, but they gave him these little web designs, this little net between his arms and his side. And I think they did that in the 60s especially to make him appear distinctive in silhouette. If you saw Batman in just silhouette, in just outline, you know who it was. Same with Thor, the Hulk, Iron Man. But in this case, you would see Spider-Man in silhouette as just a figure. No hair even shows, because of course we know he's wearing a mask. Okay. Let's take a look at this up close and check our progress. All right. Like we said, we can measure the head. Come down here to where the bottom of the chest muscles would be. Got those rounded shoulders. Everything is kind of pinched, like we said. Thicker on top than at the bottom. Same with the thighs. Same with the lower legs. Keeping those feet nice and simple. Keeping those hands nice and simple. Back of the hand is just basically a square with some 
other boxy shapes for fingers. Nice and simple. All right, looks good. Let's start adding the details that will make this into Spider-Man. Okay, let's get inking in the details of the costume that make this Spider-Man. You can see I've already penciled in some of those costume details to help me out here. Give me a little guide. Now, the first thing we want to look at is his head and face. If this helps, if we're thinking of his head as an egg, imagine there's a line down the center, a lot like this actual egg here. It's upside down. Hold on a second. Here we go. Imagine this egg turned a bit like this. If that helps you line things up on the mask. All right, let me put the egg down. Always helpful. All right. Get in there and start with the eyes. I always like to start with the little lenses, those opaque lenses that are almost triangle shaped on each side of the head. And as we know, they're covered with a big, thick, black brow. I'm going to try to color that in a bit. Same with the other side. These brows, this black ring around the lenses is thicker on the outside, thinner on the inside, and kind of mirrors the, uh, the inner lenses in shape. All right, now, whether you've drawn a line down the center or not, let's go ahead and put that center line right in there on the forehead. The thing about the bottom of Spider-Man's mask, that center line does not continue but there are two lines as if they sit on the side of his nose and mouth. In the middle of all this web is the center, a little circle there. Let's keep those radiating lines going. Notice how they all seem to come back to this little circle. They all point back to it. There we go. Before we continue, let's work on his chest insignia right here big circle for the head, and you can make this any way you'd like. He's had so many insignias in the comics and the movies and the cartoons. There really is no one. Circle for the head, kind of a pinched oval for the body. I'm going to do this for legs. What do you think of that? Arachnids have eight legs. It's kind of like an ant. Now, of course, I've got that line representing the center of his chest, which is kind of getting in the middle of things here, kind of interrupting the flow of the spider's body. But you can customize this any way you wish. All right, let's continue those radiating web lines. The rest of the web lines on his costume don't exactly connect back to that circle between the eyes but they do kind of point to it. So let's start in the middle. And if you need a line down the middle of the figure, you can do that. Now, you are notice too, what I forgot to do, I forgot to define the red and blue portions of the costume because the web lines only appear on the red portions. Let's do that now. We know on his torso, it, it kind of resembles a vest that comes down to a bit of a V like that, a V shape, wide at the shoulders, thin as it gets closer to the midsection here. The belt has a bit of a point. Good thing I put that dividing line. It really helps to represent the center of his torso. This continues as a stripe down his sleeve that connects to the top of the glove. Just like that. Same on the other side. It doesn't have to be quite exact. Just represent a stripe and a glove. The other red sections of his costume, his boots, of course, just plain old 
boots with flat tops, no cuffs, no buccaneer look, no fins, none of that stuff. All right, now that we've got that, we know where to stop our web lines, the pattern on his torso. Let's continue. Notice these lines all kind of get wider as we go down his body. And these do not have to be exact in any way, as long as you get the idea across of a web pattern. Some artists have drawn these much thicker. Some have drawn them much thinner. Some have given them many, many more intricate web lines. I like to keep them simple. Just like the 70s Spider-Man. Not a lot there, as you can see, but so bold. Okay, for this line, still kind of radiates from the head, but we're just gonna bring it down like this. Keep it simple. Just down the arm, almost like vertical stripes. Maybe another one over here, just a bit. Let's bring that, let's continue that. Here we go. Now let's continue here. There, putting in those, uh, those vertical web lines. And we gotta continue this on the feet. You'll notice I'm just going to kinda adhere to the shape we've already set down. Pinches in some areas, gets thicker in others, but roughly follows the outer shape of the lower leg. Same over here. Just follow those outer lines roughly. And there you go. Let's take a look, looking good. Not too shabby. Now here comes the somewhat tricky part. Putting in the rest of the web lines, I call these the horizontal web lines, because they tend to go across as opposed to up and down like the ones we've just filled in. On the faces you notice, they kind of radiate away like ripples from that center circle. And they're curved like that. They're about equal distance away. You can make them however. You want to add more, that's fine. But this is how they looked on the 70s Spider-Man I grew up with. Pretty much like that. Normally for the web lines, I'd use a thinner pen. I'm just using a Sharpie here for better visibility. And the thinner pen lets the figure really stand out from the costume details. Like it makes a great deal of difference. This is the body, this is shading, this is the costume details, which are much thinner, made with a thin line. And again, that circle kind of continues down the body. as it grows a little further apart, still all horizontal curved lines like that. If you actually want to take your pencil and represent where these curved lines would go, you can see I kind of did that a bit. Keep them going down the body. This is not quite exact, but you get the idea. And they continue across the belt, which extends across his lower torso. Let's come over here to this arm. You can see we've started some here. Let's just continue. These are almost stripes down here. We're not seeing where they're connecting to the vertical lines because his arm is turned away from us. Look at that. Now in the comics, Spider-Man's fingers are only made up of, the detailing on the costume, only made up of lines like that, as you can see here. They're just these lines. The web pattern kind of stops and we get these straight lines kind of stacked on his fingers. We've represented that there. Now we've got to come over to the other shoulder and just kind of continue. 
like that. Keeping them basically equal distance apart. There go those stack lines again for the finger details. Nice and simple. Keep it simple. That's the secret. Now for the boots, same thing. These kind of horizontal side-to-side -side lines that are curved to represent the spider's web. Just so you give enough of an impression of the web pattern. In real life, of course, a spider's web is not quite this neat. It can be tangled, it can have places where it starts and stops, overlaps. All right, let's stop and take a look. It looks like Spider-Man. Now some artists, of course, to represent the dark blue of the non-web pattern areas, will come in and put in shading, say, uh, you know, where shadows would fall. And that helps further differentiate the red and blue areas here on the abdomen, on the abdominal muscles. And you don't have to do any of this. You know, we could represent the lower diaphragm here where it makes the shadow, the recesses of the abs. Suck it in, Spidey, suck it in. Come on. People are watching. Also gives us a little more muscle definition. Some artists have depicted this area of his costume almost like it's uh, it's dark blue, but also is a somewhat shiny material. And the places we're not coloring in represents where it's shining and catching the light. Highlighted areas. And you know you can continue down the figure if you wanted to, you know. Really tightening up the shadows made by the quad muscles on the legs, under the knee a bit, the back of the leg as it turns away from the light. You know, you go on and on. But it's up to you. This is your drawing. You do what you have to do. So that's it. Keep it simple. Plan it step by step. Always use your pencil first so it's easy to erase. Draw lightly so it's easy to erase unwanted pencil lines. And just plan and plan and take your time and build up step by step. So here's an interesting tidbit about Spider-Man and all his fairly complex costume details. In 1967, Spider-Man got his first cartoon and the animators decided you can see it here, to simplify the costume by basically taking out all the webbing on the body, leaving it just on the head and the gloves and boots. Because of course back then animators had to do all that by hand. Each drawing was done by hand to create the illusion of movement. Very meticulous, painstaking work. So what did they do? They simplified the costume. So once again, thanks for joining me and drawing Spider-Man this time. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. You know how to reach me. Check out my website, albigley.com. And join me next time for more fun tutorials. Thank you and keep drawing. Oh wow, look at this great drawing somebody left behind. This is fabulous. I don't know who this guy is, but he's gorgeous. Ah, huh, what a shame. What a shame the artist didn't sign this. Oh well, finders keepers. Wow, what a great drawing. I'm so lucky. Today's my lucky day. Love this drawing, it's just fabulous. I gotta find a place to hang this.